Hey guys and welcome back to our channel. Today I am out in our pasture area. I wanted to show y'all a few updates. Uh, just from the last few days a lot of things has happened. One of them being uh, our new dog here which I'll kind of show y'all him and kind of talk to, to y'all about him a little bit. Uh, that's the biggest update I guess is we got a dog. He is a livestock guardian dog. Uh, we got him yesterday. He's an Ar Armenian, Armenian Gamper. Uh, I have never heard of this dog breed before, and so the name is all new to me. I'm sorry if I butchered it. Uh, hopefully, within a few days, I'll get it down right. But a few nights ago, in the middle of the night, we heard some dogs out here in our field, and Garrett came out here. We got the dogs away, but... Uh, didn't really notice anything the next morning, anything out of the ordinary. But two days later, we saw Mama here has a big hole in her neck. Uh, I'll kind of show y'all up closer a little bit. Later. But she had a big hole in her neck, I guess, when the dogs had gotten her. So we've just kind of kept her up here in this front corral, uh, doctored up her neck. She should be good uh, to go out in the, in the next day or two. But uh, I'll kind of talk to you a little bit what we did with her. But since then, we decided we really did need a livestock guardian dog. Um, we hoped to wait just a little bit longer before we got a dog. But um, we just didn't want to take any more chances. So we did get her. Here on her neck, you can kind of see that hole right there. Uh, since her fur is kind of black, you can't see it real well. But when we came out the other day, it was full of eggs and looked terrible, uh, fly eggs, looked terrible and I don't know, we were really worried about her. Like I said, we didn't realize it till two mornings later and at that point it had already gotten really bad. So what we've been doing is we cleaned it out really good. Uh, we've been coming out here making sure there's no more eggs and overnight, this is the first time I'm checking on it this morning. Overnight, there was no new eggs. It's looking a lot better. There are a few flies that we've been trying to spray her down, make sure the flies stay away. But we have used iodine and this blue coat that I'll kind of take y'all over here and show y'all what that is. I think it's just like a protective kind of bandage top. And it's this blue coat this is what we were told to use so we've been just using iodine and that on it and it's looking a lot better um since there has been some flies bothering her i don't want any more eggs to get in especially if we let her out of this little corral in the next day or two so i don't know what our next step is maybe uh i'll get some sutures stitch it up or we may uh super glue it i'm not sure yet but it's looking a lot better than it did a few days ago. So we're really hopeful with her that she will make a full recovery. And we did get the dog to kind of protect them there. So like I said, he is an Armenian or Armenian gamper. He is a big, big, big boy. Uh, we don't have a name yet for him. We're still kind of deciding. We just got him last night. So he is new. Uh, right now we just have him kind of pinned up in the corral with the sheep just because since he is new here we don't want him to run off so we want him to get good and comfortable before we let him just kind of roam the pasture and we did he keeps trying to wrap me up in the cable uh, we did take him last night kind of around the field uh, introduce him to the goats the pigs all that he loved getting in the pond as soon as he saw it he was like yeah I'm gonna go for that so he is going to enjoy going all around this area. Uh, we'll build him a nice little dog house and kind of area to get out of the sun when he wants to. Right now the area he's in is pretty shaded. And like I said, he's just up here with this sheep. But he will be a great guardian dog for us. So another update that we've got for y'all is the other day we had a lady come out and trim all of our goat's hooves and then do an ultrasound on this brown one here. And then also that black goat over by the tree there. So she trimmed their hooves, did the ultrasound, and uh, we just had them do the ultrasound on the two of them. And the black one is having one kid, and she is actually due, the lady said, within the next week or two, but probably closer to the week. And uh, that was last Friday. This is Monday. 
so we are really expecting a kid from her any day now so she's kind of been hanging out by herself yesterday she was on top of the pasture there all by herself for a while and so we really think she's getting ready to have that kid so that will be the next exciting thing is a little baby from her and then this brown one is also going to have some babies. She has twins in there. And she's about three or four months along. So she's got a little bit longer to go. She's not getting very big. And her udders are getting bigger. But they're still kind of small. But they will both have some babies. The white one also was exposed. But uh, we didn't have them do an ultrasound of her. So she's not out of the running. She may still have some babies. But uh, we aren't really worried about her right now. But that was another reason to get him is since we are going to have some babies soon, we definitely don't want any other kind of animals coming in and getting those babies. So he is going to protect our little goat kids. And he is going to do a great job at it too. And coming over here into the garden, there's quite a few things I need to get done. Uh, most important out of everything well I don't know everything I feel like is kind of important but going through the pumpkins here and some butternut squash over there I have had quite a few squash vine borers that took out all of my squash and zucchini which I'll talk about in a minute but I've also had a bunch of squash bugs so I need to go through here and pick out all the eggs all the squash bugs and get those gone because I am fighting for my pumpkin's lives here. Oh, look at that. There's a bumblebee in there pollinating my pumpkin. That is so exciting. Let's see if I can get a little bit closer without disturbing it. That is great. Good deal. But like I said, right over here, I had all of my squash, all of my zucchini plants. They were massive. They were producing really good. And then the squash vine borers hit it. And now you can see I had to take them all up. So I'm trying to protect my butternut squash over here, which I know that they're pretty resistant to squash vine borers, but I do know that the squash bugs have been uh, laying some eggs on there. So I'm trying to watch out there and keep those from dying. But since I've got this whole empty space now, so half of this bed pretty much, you know, a four by four foot section, I went and picked up a few more tomato plants. They're looking a little sad right now just because I need to get them in the ground and watered. But I got all paste variety tomatoes. So a few more San Morzanos and then some Romas. I think over here I've got some more room in this little back section to plant some more tomatoes and then plant this whole half a bed. So that's something I need to get done today. And then also just harvest a bunch of green beans here. Like you can see, let's see, uh, I've got quite a few very long yard long beans that needs to get harvested. And lastly, these green beans are doing great, but they're starting to get twisted up on each other. And I really want them to trellis down this side, so I am going to kind of untwist them as best as I can without breaking them and then uh, kind of help them along that trellis there. Oh my child I know you heard and you can't let go it's not your fault. So I just got quite a few green beans uh, from the harvest uh, the small ones, I just got one purple and one little green one. But then I got a ton of these yard-long beans. Let me find this longest bean, probably. I mean, this is a massive green bean. You can kind of see compared to my head. It, it's probably the length of my hair. But uh, it is so big, and I have got quite a few of them. So definitely a pretty good harvest of these yard long beans i saw that these are more of like a tropical uh green bean and so like they do really well in florida and stuff and so i wasn't sure here in like the northern part of arkansas how well they would do but they are actually doing better than any other green bean that i've got uh, i've harvested a few just here and there of like 
the rattlesnake green beans and then some of these you know just smaller purple and green ones but these are doing really well and so I'm so excited about this uh, definitely enough for a meal enough to start canning and so I'm really excited about these green beans but I did notice that I have quite a few aphids on my green bean plants still I've been spraying them but they are I keep looking over here I'm right beside my green bean trellis uh, but there are quite a few aphids and whenever I spray them with the neem oil and it kills them I don't really know how oh, I keep dro am I dropping these green beans I think I'm dropping them they keep falling out of my hands and it's scaring me I think something's dropping on me from the tree but uh what was I saying oh, yeah anyway so what I want to do is since it's hot enough I'm gonna spray the green beans try to get all those bugs off my plants and then let them dry out here and when the plants are fully dry go ahead and spray them then that way I know that any bugs I see on there are new bugs and not just old ones that uh, have been there for a while so I think I'm gonna go ahead and spray off the trellis real quick and then do the rest of the stuff and uh, heading to get the water hose I found this random egg just in the grass uh, you never know where you're gonna find eggs around here but I just found this one I do have uh, some soapy water here and a little butter knife to get all the eggs, to put all the bugs and stuff in. Uh, this is what I've been reading is the best way to get rid of them because if you just like throw the eggs and stuff on the ground, they'll still hatch. And so this is the best way to get rid of them is for me, uh, hand picking them and just putting them in the soapy water. So it is a very tedious kind of job, but what I do is go through every single one and try to look for any eggs I flip over every single leaf to look for any eggs or anything like that if I find an egg or in a little egg colony I guess I will show y'all I hope that we don't find any eggs but the chances of that are pretty slim like I said a lot of times with the uh butternut squash they are more resistant so hopefully on these I won't find anything uh, it is a lot of work coming and looking underneath every leaf but I really want these plants to do well I'm not ready to give up on them quite yet so this is what I'm gonna do in the meantime is just go through and look under every leaf Alright, so the butternut squash are actually looking pretty good. I didn't see any eggs on there. I didn't see any bugs kind of bothering them. Uh, the butternut squashes, this one's a little dirty just from being on the ground, but they're growing really nice, and so I'm feeling pretty good about this. Uh, I think I'll give them a good water here at the end or sometime today. That way they can get a nice watering, but overall I think these are doing really well. So I'm going to go check on the pumpkins. The pumpkins are the ones that kind of have had most of the eggs. Uh, so I don't have high hopes there, but you never know. Come all you young rounders And a story I'll tell Of the promise of heaven in the warning of hell I Take heed where you ramble Or too soon you will go Way up on the hillside Where the new flowers grow So like I said, no squash bugs or anything on the butternut squash 
the pumpkins I saw one really small collection of eggs and then one squash bug and so I got all that knocked out honestly I'm very shocked uh, the other day when I came out I got a ton of squash bugs but hopefully I'm keeping up on it enough that they won't be as bad of an issue as they could be but uh, yeah I'm not too upset about that number that's really not that bad especially if I keep them in check so that's pretty good we've got some flowers blooming over here only the cosmos have really bloomed so far these red ribenzas are really pretty uh, we have some zinnias like one right there that's starting to open and then a few more blooms that should open in a few days but right now that is really it for the flowers sun Two star-crossed lovers In the still-melting snow Where well, the loving was easy And the courting was brief Where well, they called her a beauty They called him a thief In the quiet of the evening They'd steal away Where the laughter would flow And the fiddle would play Where well, the folks called it wrong I got all the tomatoes finished up. Uh, I got one, two, three, seven planted in this bed. Uh, I decided to use cages this time instead of the stakes like I had over there. I really do like the stakes, but I really just wanted to try something different and turned out that they were out of the stakes anyways. But I got all seven planted over here and then I popped one more San Morzano just in the middle of this bed here and I will have to go back and get one of these red stakes for that one. But I got all those planted. The day turned to night Come up on the hillside We'll have a time If you'll bring the kisses, honey I'll bring the wine Keep your heart guarded So I got the trellis all straightened out here uh, there were quite a few green beans that like the shoots were going off to the side and then getting tangled up or they'd start to go up and then come back down and twist on itself but I really want this whole thing to be filled with green beans by the end of the summer and so I'm trying to train them and get them to go all the way down to the other side. I do have a few green beans that are planted on this side and surprisingly they have actually been producing some green beans but they're just not taking off on the trellis like I hoped. I did kind of bring this pumpkin up and uh, kind of getting that one trained up on the trellis. But this is looking really, really great. We've got quite a few on the other side and even one about halfway down this side. So they are looking great. And I really am loving these yard long beans like we have got quite a few more that aren't really ready to come off this one still has another day or two but I'm loving the way they're just falling within the inside of this trellis you can see we've got quite a few just right here and so it is looking really great I'm loving the green beans this year we've also got a few little red cherry tomatoes to pick so I'm gonna pick these two off you see we've got another one that'll be ready to pick in a day or two but I have got a ton of tomatoes obviously just a ton of these little cherry ones but my big kind of slicing tomatoes are doing really well also I mean you can see the size of my hand in comparison so they're growing pretty good we've got a whole group back here um, some more 
just throughout these plants. And then even my San Morizanos are really putting on some fruit. Let's see, I'll take y'all all the way around. So we've got fruit, I think, on every single plant over here. Uh, a few of these need to be trellised through. I might as well bring that one over here as also. Let's see, that one can be tucked under. This one I kind of planted far along from the trellis, so I'm going to try to weave that kind of down there and hope that works pretty good. There we go. But I'm really excited about the tomatoes. And as sad as I am about losing the squash and zucchini, I am excited to have more tomatoes. Uh, hopefully I have plenty to can. So since it is getting pretty hot outside right now, I don't want to water the garden just yet, but I am gonna go ahead and spray the neem oil all over the green beans. And then, honestly, I'll probably spray on all of our plants. Uh, when I was using the water to spray off the green beans, I mean, some of the aphids kind of went around to other plants. And so I want to make sure that they don't spread to other plants. Also, neem oil is just really good for any kind of bugs. It, it'll protect from bugs, uh, different fungicides. And so it'll be good for the flowers, the tomatoes, the uh, butternut squash, all that. So I'll just go ahead and spray everything down with the neem oil and then probably call it a day. Well, too soon it'll fall When one walks back home, honey Only one knows it all There she walked up the hillside Long one day Heart is a hunter, always knows of its prey. All right, so I think that's going to be it for today. We got a lot of stuff done this morning, but it is getting pretty hot out. So I'm going to go in. Uh, I will keep you all updated on our goats, especially that black one, if she kids today or here within the next few days. I will definitely let you all know that. But thank you all for sticking to the end, and I will see you later. Bye.